Now, the other two considerations were revisit time and wavelength. So what's, what about revisit time? Well, revisit time, I mean, if you look at the orbit, so here is the object in low Earth orbit. Yep. And you can see in that orbit, it flew over the middle of the Amazon, so they can get good pictures of that. But you're not going to get a picture of California. Yeah. Now in the next orbit, it's going over Colombia. Um, and the next orbit, it's going to go, where's it going to go over Mexico, and yep. Yucatan and so on. Now you're going to potentially be just close enough to California that you can get okay, it? Okay, so now it went over at least Baja, California. Yep. Um, and so... If you've only got one spacecraft, it's going to be in a particular inclined orbit. That's right. And it can take photos a certain degree sideways. It doesn't have to look at things straight underneath. It can look off to the side. To yeah, it's what extent. we call the, the swath, how far it can look yes. side to side. But again, there's a limit to how much it can so do. So typically maybe a few hundred kilometers, maybe yep. 800 kilometers sideways. But that basically means there's a region a certain number of kilometers wide that it can look at. Yep. And in principle, it could take pictures of all of that and then download them all. But that would be far more data than it can download. Yes. So that's not going to happen. And then when it gets to the ground station, it downloads this whole stuff. That's right. So what that means is, um, depending how many satellites, if you've just got one satellite, and depending how far sideways you're prepared to look, because you're looking really sideways, it can be hard to get a good point of view. Exactly, that's right, because your image is going to be a little bit blurry. Yes. Um, so for the Maxar commercial satellites, the ones that took the space selfie of our campus, they've got about 25 centimeter resolution. And on average, the revisit time is less than 24 hours. That's right. So if you want to look at a particular place, you can go to the Maxar website. That's right. Have got a contract with them and say, please observe the following next time you can. And probably sometime within the next 24 hours, one of their satellites will go over there. That's right. And now they're about to roll out 10 centimeters with six of them, partially to reduce that revisit time. Yes, because for some applications, it really matters. You want to visit quite quickly. Yeah. Military was definitely yes. a case. Yes. <laughs> it's not very useful to know where the enemy <laughs> tanks were three days ago. That's right. You kind of want to know within. And that's right. If you're looking for changes within hours or days, that's going to depend dramatically on what you can do with your satellite. But if you're looking at crop yields, then it doesn't matter so much. That's right. And the Maxar can observe 680,000 square kilometers a day. So that's a lot of square kilometers, but that's still only 0.1% of the Earth's surface. But this is, I think, the other important part. That's 100 terabytes. You know, that's 100 computers almost worth of data per day. And it has to download that at least pretty much every day, because otherwise it's backlogged, or your customers aren't giving their data, so they're And the customers actually going to do something with that. If yes. I gave you, here's 100 terabytes of data to find all the, uh, I don't know, uh, dead trees in it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take a while. Yes. Yeah, so often these companies are now offering a whole service. So yeah. they will also process your data for you because it's a very specialist skill. Yep. Then the other thing we have to worry about is the wavelength you oh. work at. This is the electromagnetic spectrum all the way from uh, um, X-rays, gamma rays to radio waves. And it turns out that we can only use two parts of this for remote sensing. One is the visible and infrared, the other is the radio. The reason is at every other wavelength, the atmosphere is opaque. So essentially, even if we took an image, we could not send that data back to Earth. Well, you, you, you take a picture and then send the data down as a radio wave, so that's not yeah. a problem. The thing is, all you'll see is the top of the atmosphere. Now, sometimes that's what you want. For example, down here in the ultraviolet, yes. the satellites that discovered the ozone hole in the first place, they're looking right. down at the upper atmosphere and seeing ozone is blocking us less than it used to. Yes. Um, but normally, if you want to look at the Earth's surface, you have to find a transparent part they can of the see atmosphere. All the way down. So you can see all the way down. And that basically means visible light, a few particular windows in the infrared, or the radio. So even if you wanted to look here uh, or into the X rays and gamma rays, all you're going to see is just the outside as a. Top of the atmosphere. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's the limitation for that.